Yes, someone's taking a picture of me. I swear to saw. I swear. Ground face front. Um, I think they're tight and they can go, buddy. You have the wrong pants on then. And I pull out however many fibers I want to make the thickness or thinness of the yarn that I want to make. I can make thread, I can make a thick yarn, I can make a very thick yarn for a heavy blanket or a, a sewing thread. Whatever I want, I get to decide right here. So we're just pulling some fibers out and twisting them together. Now if I twirl this, the, the lump on the stick, uh, causes the stick to twirl even longer than it would by itself. So then I don't have to twist the fiber myself. All I have to do is pull out however many I want. Now normally we wouldn't be spinning um, except at home, but unfortunately the soldiers, when they march, they wear out their stockings. So I have many thousands of stockings to be mended and it's too expensive to purchase or it might be unavailable for, um, for the army to purchase yarn for us to mend their stockings. So we're take, shearing the sheep from last night's dinner and uh, making our own yarn with a, a, our cards and our stick and then we'll get to darning stockings really very soon as soon as we make a few skeins of yarn. How long would it take you to do that? Um, it all depends on how often, but I, I know that um, to make a square yard of fabric out of wool, and if you're weaving the wool, and raising the sheep, shearing the sheep, washing the wool, carding the wool, spinning it, and then weaving it, takes 25 hours to make a square yard of fabric about the size of this apron. It takes 50 yards to make, I mean 50 hours to make a square yard of linen fabric out of flax because you're having to plant the plants, tend the field, weed it, and then harvest it. Um, that's something that a camp follower could never do because we're never in uh, a place long enough to be able to harvest any sort of crop. Uh, but we, we can harvest uh, wool because the sheep's doing all the work. <laughs> um, it takes 50 hours to make a square yard of fabric out of linen and 100 hours to make a square yard of fabric, uh, woven fabric, out of cotton because cotton has all those seeds. Linen um, is made from the flax plant and that's like a two or three month growing season. Cotton is an 11 month growing season. So you're tending that cotton, picking off the boll weevils every single day um, and then weeding and for 11 months and then you're picking it, which is very excruciating and then picking out all the seeds. So it takes 100 hours to make one square yard of fabric out of cotton. So wool is our, it's Especially in the north, wool is our most popular fabric. In the south, linen or hemp is our most popular fabric and wool is a close second because it's just so much easier to make wool fabric so we're going to make it and use it as much as we can.
But during the war, wool is uh, in great shortage, so it's very hard to get a hold of uh, wool that we can process. Um, unless you have, you're actually eating the little guy. <laughs> and we go through a lot of sheep in our big yeah. army. every. <laughs> Every event I go to, I have. And, uh, camp followers are doing mending, which is we're spinning yarn to prepare for doing mending, um, or sewing of clothes, or uh, nursing the men in the hospital. Wherever you have an army, you have a hospital. And uh, also um, laundry. If we can get the, um, the clothes off the men's backs, <laughs> uh, we'll do laundry. And we get a small payment for laundry only. Um, because we have to purchase the items that we need to do the laundry, the various uh, soaps and things. At home we would make our own soaps, but on the road, following the army, carrying everything you own, uh, you really can't do that. So you have to purchase the buckets and the soaps and the various lies and, and uh, chemicals that you use to wash the clothing. <laughs> Or you just make the soldiers run through the river and then they're all clean. <laughs> so those are the, the three main duties. Now we are demonstrating cooking here and I'll let Olivia talk about that, but um, those would be unusual circumstances that we would cook for the soldiers. We usually just cook for ourselves. The rations are given to the, the women's groups and we decide who and how it's cooked and who gets um, how much rations based on how much they contributed to each other in support of all our, our duties. Everybody thought I had... End of the fort. Take him around to the right. Follow the trail. Present arms. Shoulder bar lock. One, two. So the, the, the action should be crisp, but not hurry. Uh, should be about a second between each movement, but a crisp movement in between. Fix bayonets. Don't have. Bring it down to your left hand. Go through the motion. Very good. Yeah. Got one right now. I love it. <laughs> Shoulder, arms. Virginians, charge, bayonet. Hurrah! 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 Shoulder, fire lock. Unfix bayonet. Prepare to prime and load. Bring the gun down to your breath so you're ready to... Half up. Fire lock. Fight. Spit. Prime. Shut. Hand. Automatically pass about. Charge with cartridge. Shoulder, fire lock. I mean the catering stuff. Battalion fire. Virginians, make ready. Take aim. Fire. Shoulder, fire lock. Go off. <laughs> okay, of course it's okay. <laughs> 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 
Secure fire locks. Can you bring it down under your Section one. Make ready. Take aim. Fire. Boom. Go Shoulder. Fire lock. Right about. Face. Forward. March. Go. Go. Section two. Section one. Hold. Right about. Make face. Ready. Take aim. Prime and load. Go Prime and load. Right about. Face. From the shoulder when you let him. Shoulder, fire locks, right about face. Forward, lock. Section one, make ready. Take aim. Right about face. Fire. Shoulder, fire lock. Right about face. Prime and load, section two. Forward, mark. Make ready. Halt. Take aim. Right about face. Fire. Boom. Right Shoulder right. your fire locks. Right about face. Forward. Mock. Halt. Take aim. Fire. Boom. Shoulder fire lock. Section one, two paces to the front, march. Left face. Front, march. Take care. Oh. Right face. Heights are off, correct? Right. So we're going to do a counter march. And the order for that is going to be Virginians take care to counter march by the left, and you do a left face, and you just follow the guy in front. And then when we turn, we'll be facing the guys where we are. Virginians take care, prepare to counter march by the left, and by left face. March! Come, come around, come around, come around, counter march. It should be 180. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's why we're doing it. Keep, keep marching. Come on. Take care. Yeah. Oh. Still. Oh, because the enemy's that way. Just go through the motion. Virginians, make ready. Take aim. Fire. Boom. Shoulder. Fire lock. To the front. Mark. Left heel. Mark. Look out. Look toward me. Person on the end just marches in place. Push your shoulder against the line. But keep going, right? I didn't tell you to stop. Yeah. 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 Oh, we're doing a grand wheel. <laughs> Very good. I like my hair, sir. Front. Take care. Halt. Can I put you in command of the unit and have like you did with Mike? Have I move around? Can you grab a gun again real quickly? When you're at the shoulder to go to poise, the first, the one, the gun is twisted forward, so the lock faces forward, hand to the wrist. This is the wrist and this is the swell. Those are the two things where you're gonna grab. So it's, um, so for poise, it's one, two. And when you go back to um, 
the shoulder, it's one, two. Shoulder, fire line. Virginians, point, fire line. One, two. Shoulder, fire line. One, two. Virginians, present arms. One, two, three. The, the, the musket should be over your left knee, and you want your arms to kind of hang. You're not really holding it up, just kind of let it hang down. Virginians, shoulder, fire lock. One, two. Better. Um, about advance. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Virginians, advance. Now, advance arms, that's the one that you're going to end up with it on your right side and you're holding it basically by the trigger guard. Okay. So, advance arms. One, poised, two, three. Hook it. there. That's the one I wanted to be, but that's the fun to be. Wait, wait, wait. Yep, sir. Damn the cartridge, you bastard cartridge! I am insulted by your lacking faith of us, sir. Charge with cartridge. Round down cartridge. Brick and prime. Boom. Gun prime. Make ready. Give fire. Then the vent, that's the one where the piece about the sponge, sponge piece. Huh? Back in, there's my trick. You gotta. Yeah. Other way. Yeah, Bank clear, both clear? Bank clear. Four clear. Four clear. That's the worm, worm piece, and that's sponge, sponge piece. What's that sponge holding up? Black. Good? Yep, good. Okay. Have a cartridge, if that's a cartridge. Charge with cartridge! Picatillo, perfect. Ram down cartridge! Home. Frickin' prime! Make ready! Give fire! Then the vent. That's warm when the piece events a sponge, sponge piece. <coughs> if anyone has any questions or wants to talk about the gun, you can come on closer and we can discuss the artillery with you. This is a gun that's used to travel along with the infantry. It, 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 it's not a siege weapon. It's not used for fortifications. It's used to fire at infantry. So if you see what you see here is the bare minimum crew for a gun of this size. Usually you would have about 12 to 14 people manning a gun of this size for moving the gun and for uh, loading and firing it. You would have a, a tumbrel cart with the ammunition in the back. You would have people whose sole jobs were to carry that drag rope. You'd have three guys on each side. So you'd have six guys that were uh, drag, what we call a drag rope men or to move the gun. Uh, the way you load this gun is, um, is, is this gun does not fire exploding shot, it fires inert shot. So it fires round uh, round ball, iron ball. It fires something called canister, which is a tin can filled with balls. It's uh, meant to fire and hit in front of the advancing infantry and break open and, and spread uh, shrapnel out and hit, hit the advancing troops. So the first thing you do when you load this gun is you want to make sure that it's clean so you have a care! That's the worm, worm the piece! 
take that corkscrew, it's got very sharp kinds on the end of it, and you make sure that there's no piece of the, the cartridge that was last in there still in there. So you want to scrape that off, because if there's any burning piece of cartridge, and you put another round down there, you're like that, likely to have a premature explosion, which would injure the, the gunner. That's the war, a sponge, sponge the piece. So he's got a piece of lamb's wool that's been uh, moistened. It goes in there, it creates a suction as well as the moisture to make sure any sparks that are still in there get extinguished. Okay. Go ahead and finish. Okay. Handle cartridge! Okay, so the, the matross at the back of the gun is carrying a cartridge board in a secure haversack. Advance the cartridge! And in this time period, the cartridges are, are, are fixed cartridges. It means it has a powder bag attached to a projectile. Charge with cartridge! Ram down cartridge! And the man on the right of the gun is ramming the charge down to the very back of the, the breech. And in the breech of the hole, that's where this person has their thumb over it to keep any oxygen from getting in there. Prick and prime! <coughs> she's taking a sharp metal tool and puncturing that cartridge and she's putting a priming tube in there. The priming tube is basically like a fuse. It's been uh, coated with something called quick, uh, quick match or solution that when you, I touch this to it, it's going to ignite and it's going to shut that charge off. Gun prime. Have a care! Make ready! Give fire! Send the that the worm, worm the piece, that's the sun, punch the piece. So a uh, Royal Artillery crew of this time period could fire six rounds a minute. Um, the, the fastest recorded, they had a race. They had a, a friendly competition with their Hessian allies um, up in the, the Saratoga campaign. And they documented the, the, the uh, Hessians had a rate of fire of up to 12 rounds a minute. Um, they did that by skipping some of the important safety things that we did. Like they, don't, they didn't sponge and ram between every round which, you know, very dangerous, uh, especially in the time period, because we use tin foil for the, in this period for, for safety reasons. They use something, they use a flannel. So the flannel would hold the spark and, you know, have an ember in there. So there's a strong possibility that the gun could go off. Did anyone have any questions?